a dichotomy of environment and development. As a notoriously hazardous and filthy industry, global ship recycling began receiving media attention and public criticism soon after the business migrated from the developed shipbuilding countries of the north to the developing nation of the south in the early 1980s. Until it came to the developing nation like Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan, it was a highly mechanized industry. Bangladesh remained the largest shipbreaking state from 2004 to 2008. The import of ships into this country has increased at the rate of 40% per annum on average consistently since 1980. In 2019, Bangladesh recycled nearly half of the total obsolete tonnage of the world. However, the problems associated with shipbreaking in this country have been recurrent ones. Incidents of human casualties have increased at the same pace as the increase in the import of ships and shipbreaking activities. Typically, shipbreaking industry unmasks many contrasting claims between stakeholders in the field with respect to their socio-economic contribution. There is also a significant debate among the scholars discussing shipbreaking issues. Admittedly, the economic contribution of the shipbreaking industry were not portrayed in published literatures in enough detail when compared to the discourse that described the social and environmental disaster arising from shipbreaking. Two recent reports, the Environmental Impact Study and the Economic Impact Study entitled Safe and Environmentally Sound Ship Recycling in Bangladesh, Phase 1, published under the auspices of the International Maritime Organization or IMO and the Government of Bangladesh or GOB, are worth considering. The Sensric Economic Impact Study has documented remarkable economic benefit from shipbreaking in Bangladesh. Its Environmental Impact Study has concluded that shipbreaking activities in Bangladesh didn't cause any mentionable harm in the coastal areas of the country despite the increasing operation in Bangladesh over the last several decades. While the IMO attempted to separate itself from the claims made in this publication, these academic works were designed to enhance the credible information based on shipbreaking in Bangladesh. Some argue this report served as a timely response to the off-the-beach propaganda of green activists opposing beach breaking, widely practiced in South Asia since 1980s. Notably, the findings of both the report of the IMO augmented the growth of the industry by highlighting the economic merits and soft bedelling the environmental footprints of ship recycling. The Sensrec project calls for a closer scrutiny over the safety and health issue in ship breaking. But the IMO and GOB have avoided an assessment of the social cost of shipbreaking in Bangladesh for unknown reason. There is, however, no dearth of information on the matter available from reports of NGOs at both the global and national levels, including reports from international organizations, independent researchers, and the media. Relying on academic articles favorable to the industry of shipbreaking has been a recent strategy to respond to the propaganda by green activists who oppose shipbreaking on the beach. There is an unspoken kinship between the top brass of IMO, leading international cash buyers, and top officials of the GOB, such that the Sensric project is subject to a reasonable suspicion of the state's unwillingness to acknowledge the concern of vulnerable classes. The industry's close ties with the highest strata of government, together with the dominant classes taking advantage of the unprivileged member of society, 
are unfortunate aspect of the policy making process in all developing countries and Bangladesh is an, an exception. The Sandstrike project was funded by the Norwegian Agency, Agency for the Development Cooperation. As a directorate of the government of Norway, it has to promote the interests of Norway, one of the top 10 ship-owning nations in the world by value. Norway is a number three on the list of shipping nations with beneficial ownership and the 13th largest flag state. After oil, shipping is considered as the largest industry in the country and there are about 450 shipping companies involved in maritime trade in Norway. According to several leading NGOs, many donations are made by those with vested interests and channeled through government of third world nation which remain not only grossly insufficient to deal with the magnitude of the problem but are also motivated by ill-fated initiative. On 13 December 2010 and 27 January 2011, the head of the government of Bangladesh was notified by a group of 42 NGOs to remain cautious about such attempts by IMO, but the Bangladeshi government doesn't seem to be interested in sharing the expertise of NGOs even if their recommendation may be based on solid information and expertise. Environmental or Economic Pollution According to environmental economists, pollution not only depends on the physical aspect of the waste in environment, but also on the human reaction to this effect. The physical effect can be chemical or biological, and the human dissatisfaction or loss of expectation in a defined geographical community signifies the psychological effect on the population. The concern and anxiety of the population, therefore, makes geography part of the definition of economic pollution. There is a difference between environmental pollution and economic pollution, and the latter isn't necessarily harmful to the country in an aggregate same. Concern and anxiety, loss of amenities, and dissatisfaction depend on the standard of life, which varies dramatically between developed and developing economies. However, the optimum level of pollution for a third world nation like Bangladesh, India, or Pakistan is based on their citizen expectation or satisfaction and the potential tolerable limit of such economic pollution is virtually unknown the imo moi centric report predictably has ignored the second part of the definition of economic pollution and relied exclusively on the reverent value of scientific data to conclude whether the current level of pollution in the coastal area of bangladesh is within tolerable limit or not as per the recommendation of the IMO report, there appears to be no concrete data available either to prove or disprove the actual level of pollution that physically exists in the coastal area of Bangladesh, where the shipbreaking activities are mainly concentrated. This project report is crucial and expected to play a pivotal role in the making of policy of the government of Bangladesh on shipbreaking and also in international decision making such as before the IMO. Be that as it may, the current determination shows severe disregard to numerous long-established principles of international environmental laws predominantly the principle of intergenerational equity and the precautionary principle. Following this principle, it is reprehensible to allow any questionable polluting activity without taking any preventive or precautionary measures when scientific uncertainty creates an obstacle for making policy on any matter of development. 
The principal purpose of the disclosure policy of any corporate entity is to guarantee the release of necessary information to the public that is not confidential in nature and doesn't give, an, and doesn't give away trade secret but provides stakeholders with accurate, timely, and affordable information. Thank you.